The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Stock Market Authority Podcast. I'm Bakes, Kevin Baker. I'm going to teach you how to make money in up and down markets. Very few podcasters or coaches cover this. I'll show you how to lock in profits and minimize losses to make you a better investor. So once a week, you're going to know what's going on in the world and the stock market. Welcome to the Stock Market Authority Podcast. Good morning. This is Bakes, Kevin Baker, Stock Market Authority. Great to see you. It is Wednesday, the 25th of January, 2023, 10 a.m. And uh, hope you're great. Uh, hello, Facebook. We're live. Uh, today, we're going to talk about what to invest in now. And I mean right now. Uh, we're going to open up the mailbag and uh, B3, Bakes, uh, uh, back to basics uh, for some uh, clarification uh, some technical analysis books that people asked about. Uh, I'll analyze the uh, an internet retailer for for a friend, and um, they're going to go through, go through the portfolio, talk about recent changes and and uh, and current positioning. But first, today's top story: uh, what to invest in now. And and this was really uh, this is kind of personal. Uh, a friend, a relatively new friend, reached out to me. I'm going to call him Bill from Boston. That isn't who he is, but that's that's the, for the sake of this and anonymity. I want to do that. No, oh, by the way, uh, if you want to reach out to me, I'll keep you anonymous with anything you you ask me. Bakes at StockMarketAuthority.com at Bakes Takes underscore, and I'll answer anything that you uh, want to. But what to invest in now? Uh, Bill uh, inherited some money, and. Um, uh, frankly, I, I picked up in the conversation really, really quickly, and this might fit you as well. He was way more concerned about losing money than making a lot of money. And that's fairly, fairly standard. I, I encounter that all the time. And frankly, that's the way to go. And I did this probably two years ago for a fellow in a similar circumstance, and I came up with this investing pyramid. And it's just a way for me to conceptualize it and hopefully you see it so that if you have a new sum of money that comes from a sale of a business and inheritance, this is what I would suggest. So, and again, I don't know your finance, this is a financial advice. I don't know your financial situation in and out, but I think this makes a lot of sense. And you tell me and come back to me if, uh, if, I've, if I've gone astray. Uh, I would make sure you have a year's worth, whatever that number is for you, in cash and gold. 50-50, that would be my mix, but you decide. Just have, in case of emergency, break glass. I've got a year's worth of cash and gold to handle whatever the hell comes. And I just think that makes sense. And just think about what that just did. You just said, I've de-risked losing a lot of money from this inheritance. I've done something smart. I put it in something very safe, very conservative. Cash has a yield now, so it pays you 3 percent uh, or 3% or so. Uh, gold, we'll see what gold does, but I think that those two counterbalance each other, and I think psychologically that frees you to deploy the rest of the inheritance in a, in a meaningful way. You've probably done this, uh, but I, I say this mainly for my younger audience you know, that have new families, uh, by term life insurance. You get hit by a bus, I need X amount of dollars so my family is, is taken care of. Again, I don't know that number for you, you, but you should be able to figure that out pretty easily with a with a, a financial advisor. So cash and gold, term life insurance, and then income. If your job pays you enough that you're comfortable and you've got you've got excess, great. If you're retired or you want to retire and you now have this 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 money. Uh, perhaps you want to buy bonds. I would say, as conservative as it sounds like you are, Bill, I would buy treasuries that yield, you know, four to three percent, depending on where you do it. And this gets a little bit wonky, but I would buy maturities. I, I would ladder maturities. So I would buy a one-year treasury, a two-year treasury, a three-year treasury, which costs next to nothing now at Fidelity or anybody like that. So you're taking the interest rate risk away. You're bringing in income, whatever that is. You have a million bucks, 3%. You get $30,000 coming in on top of everything. And you can see how we're building the pyramid here. So now... I hope you're not concerned about losing a heck of a lot of money because of what we just did. 
So now I would have uh, uh, the S&P 500, the 500 strongest companies in America. Uh, the, we have 340 million people in this great country that are working hard to make their lives better and create products and services that people want. And then they coalesce into the S&P 500. So I'm going to bet with America all the time. Uh, now, there are going to be times when this goes down. 30% of the time, the S&P 500 goes down, and you got to be ready for that. But because of those other steps in the, the, the layers of the pyramid, I don't think you're going to be that concerned if the S&P goes down you know, X dot 19% like it did last year. I don't think you're going to freak out that much. After you do that, here's my shameless plug. Come to Stock Market Authority. Because what do we do? I... I am shoulder to shoulder with you. I, I invest with my wife. I invest with my boys. And I say, here's what I see going on out there. I want to make money every single year. There's 2,000 ETFs. I can find something that's going to make, I'm going to find 10 of them that are going to work this year. It's We've done it every year since we started three years ago. We were up last year at a down market. I know I say that all the time, but I want to reinforce that point. So I hope, Bill, that if you uh, and, and oh, by the way, this doesn't have to happen on, on, on a given Thursday. You can do this over time. It doesn't have to be a big bang. So uh, I hope that that I've, I've presented a framework that at least you can start plugging some numbers in and say, I would feel comfortable, you know, investing in the stock market in this way after I've built this base. And uh, and please. You know, subscribe and share the Stock Market Authority. Go to the stockmarketauthority.com. Uh, subscribe to the newsletter because I not only do this wonderful show with Chrissy uh, uh, every week, but I also break in over the course of the week with things that, that, that I think bolster uh, our investing approach. So, Bill, I hope that's helpful. Uh, reach out to me, Bakes at stockmarketauthority.com or at BakesTakes underscore on Twitter, and I'll flesh out anything you'd like me to. But I really think that uh, is the way to go. And that's today's stop story. Where to invest now? Incoming! There's a letter in your mailbox. You got mail. <laughs> it's time to check the mailbag, folks. Uh, and uh, I had sort of a, uh, an epiphany a little while ago. Frankly, I had a, a frank conversation with my son, and he said, hey, Dad, you kind of lose me sometimes. And I know uh, the data center business inside and out, but I don't read charts the way you have. And so, uh, you know, explain things a little bit more. And then I had a, um, uh, you know, a, a friend who I was talking about, hey, here's what I like about these ETFs. And he stopped me and said, Bakes, what's an ETF? So clearly, I get over my skis sometimes, and I have to dial it back and get back to basics, hence B3 bakes back to basics. And so Matt from Arlington, Virginia, uh, here, what, what's an ETF? An ETF, it's an acronym. It's an exchange-traded fund, okay? Exchange-traded fund. It's a portfolio. It's a group of stocks. It, there could be other things in there. For simplicity, it's a group of stocks. It's a portfolio. And uh, it's in contrast to the way the business was, was built for years, mutual funds, which is just a lot of people coming together, a portfolio manager running a portfolio, and he's picking these stocks. An exchange-traded fund is either active or passive, and it's simply a group of stocks. That's all it is. The feature of an exchange-traded fund is that it trades, as, as the name implies, it's either on the New York or the NASDAQ stock exchange, and it trades all day, 9.30 to 4 during open market orders. Mutual funds in the old days, and they're dying off, uh, 4 o'clock, they set the, the net asset value. That's the price. If you put an order in over the course of the day, you got that one price at the end. I like the fact that we have exchange-traded funds because it gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of tax advantages, but it also gives you a chart. And I don't know if you noticed this, but I kind of like charts. And I get a lot of information from how the, the, the ETF trades over different periods of time. I put up for here, uh, for this example, the, the Crane Shares China Internet Fund. It's a recent buy of ours. We're already making money, which is always a good sign. And I take a look at this, and I see that the, there's a, uh, a, a change happening. I don't know if it's going to, you know, how monstrous it's going to be, but clearly things are getting better for the Chinese internet stocks. The Communist Party has, has 
allow them to flourish a little bit. They have uh, uh, allowed the Ant financial deal to to go through the IPO process. So things are 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 are, are changing. China itself, the economy is opening up, and this ETF, which is uh, KWEB, K W E B, uh, owns Tencent. Alibaba, which is like the the Amazon of of, uh, of China, JD.com, you know, pretty big, well known liquid names that are um, uh, that the ETF goes out and and buys, and that's all it is. It's an exchange traded fund is simply a portfolio that trades on the exchange so that you can between nine thirty and four. Uh, invest in in these themes and these groups in a diversified way. The stock, the, the ETFs, most of the ones that we buy have 20, 30 stocks in there, so we're very well diversified. Stocks move in groups, and we use the explosion of exchange-traded funds to find the top 10 that we can invest in and make money every year in up and down markets. So uh, I hope that's been helpful. Please tell me if, I, if I've uh, uh, gone awry. And throw the flags on the play in the future if, uh, if I uh, get too complicated. Uh, Hellfire468 came to me on YouTube, and I encourage all of you to do that. I read everything. Uh, uh, come in to me with comments, questions. And uh, he asked, I, or she, I don't even know, uh, what books do you like for technical analysis? And, of course, this is near and dear to my heart. Technical analysis is reading the charts and getting information from you know, plotting price and volume on the charts over periods of time to find new opportunities how to lock in profits, minimize losses, all the things that are, that are near and dear to my heart. Uh, I went through the 87 crash. Yes, that's how old I am. And I realized I didn't know what I was doing. And the Wall Street analysts didn't know what they were doing. And the people that seemed to, to make money, avoid pain, profit were technical analysis, people who could read charts. And so I read everything. I read, listen, I mean, hundreds, hundreds of books. But here are my top three. How to Make Money in Stocks by Bill O'Neill, William O'Neill. Uh, may he rest in peace. He started an investor's business daily. He runs the, He uh, started the Market Smith service, which creates all these charts that I use here. I've been a client for 30-plus years. I'm a fan, to put it mildly. I have every ETF that's out there plugged into Market Smith so I can go through on a step-by-step -step basis. And this would be, and this is the order I would do it. How to make money in stocks first. He goes through his can slim uh, uh, technique, which I won't get current, annual, new, et cetera. But it, it's a framework for uh, uh, looking at what has worked in the past and in investing in stocks and applying it into the future. And, and then coming up with some basic chart patterns that seem to recur again and again and again that provide good buy points. Now, this is art and science. So you're, you're going off on a journey here, which I applaud you for. But um, uh, this was, was uh, instrumental and, and life-changing for me to see how technical analysis can be, be combined with fundamental analysis to, to make money in stocks. So I would start with that. Uh, and we have the, the uh, links in uh, the description, so you can go right there and, uh, and uh, tell them Bake sent you. Um, uh, also, the second book is also from Bill O'Neill, uh, and it's How to Make Money Selling Stocks Short. And that gets a little complicated. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time in here unless you really want me to in the future. But what this was good for me was there's literally dozens, maybe even hundreds of examples. I didn't bring with me. I'm kind of mad. But I've got a very worn, dog-eared copy at home. And it goes through all kinds of stocks as they have had big runs, they, they form tops, and they roll over, and they decline by 70, 80, 90%. And you might have some of those in your portfolio, and what I want to make sure I do is take those historical examples and have you lock in profits and minimize losses. When I talk about my sell discipline, it largely comes from this, looking at how all of these stocks in the past 
started to to descend, how you could see when they were getting into trouble and how you can get out in a methodical way to avoid those big losses. So uh, how to make money selling stocks short is my second one. I recommend it highly. And please keep coming back to this, subscribe and share, because I utilize that extensively when I say I'm getting out of of, uh, of, of Big winners and when I'm cutting losses in, in both cases. Last is technical analysis explained. And this is the last one because this really goes into the weeds. This is from Martin Pring, really wonderful uh, uh, giant in technical analysis. And this is sort of the Bible of technical analysis. People might argue with me, but it's the one that was the best for me. After I went through those interim steps, introductory steps, I ended up with technical analysis explained. Uh, Suze, if you're listening to it, thanks for doing that. She w went on a... Um, uh, a journey, uh, I don't know how many Christmases ago, to get me this book. Uh, not the easiest thing to find back then. This is pre-Amazon, and I just devoured it. And and it, it is it's uh, the the reason I can see things in the charts that many people can't. I'm finding out, and I can come up with the opportunities that make money in up and down markets. For, for you folks. So please go to the description, uh, click on those links, and I think all those books uh, are, are well worth the price of admission, believe me. Um, last, Harry from Philly uh, asked me about Shutterstock, SSTK, and he goes, Bakes, this looks like it's breaking out. And it, it's going up, uh, but it is, and this is indicative of many stocks in this market right now. I would say this is a bounce, and my whole rationale is I want to see in big increases in volume, up volume, uh, as they break out into new highs to see a really significant trend change. And it, you know, sometimes I miss some things, but if if it doesn't go up and break out on fifty percent plus above average volume, I kind of say I don't trust it. I've seen those fail a lot more than. Think about what happens. You have a change in fortune for a company. Uh, uh, the analyst puts sell recommendations on it. People abandon it. They get sick of it. They have earnings call after earnings call. That's lousy. And then something happens. They have a new product. They have a new CEO. They have an activist investor. They finally have numbers that have come down so much that they blow apart earnings expectations and everybody has to run and do their work all over again. That's not what's happening here. Take a look at this, the, the, this arrow on the far right here. Uh, it's below the 65-ish level. And until it gets above that on big volume, I kind of say the jury's out. Yes, things are getting better, but I'm not wowed by the the volume I see here in the lower right. Uh, I think it's suspect. Worth watching because if it takes out 65 on on a big increase in volume, then you're you've got a really good base, uh, a launching pad to go to go uh, skyward after that. And also, I look at the far left and I see 17 times earnings for no growth. And, I, you know, there might be a story there that's, that's beyond these cold, hard numbers that I see here. But, you know, if you're not growing, I don't care. And I hate to be like that. And my whole point is there's, there's thousands of ideas out there. I'm looking for 10. And if this doesn't make it into the top 10, fine. Next, go to something else. But I know it's of, of uh, concern to you. I think it's looking better. I want to see the, the, the breakout of 65 on big volume. And I'll keep this in my system, and I'll let you know if, uh, if and when I see that, that occurring. Hey, that's it for the mailbag this week. If you want to write into the show with any questions or comments, please email me at bakes at stockmarketauthority.com. Even better, leave me a voice recording, and uh, we, can, uh, we can play your question on the show. Let's take a break. When we come back... We'll take a look at the, the Stock Market Authority portfolio, and I'll give you this week's Bakes Takes. You're listening to SMA, Stock Market Authority. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Do you want to become a better investor? Do you want to learn how to make money in both up and down markets? Then you need to go to stockmarketauthority.com and sign up for our free newsletter today. Stock Market Authority is run by award-winning investment manager Kevin Bakes Baker. His aim is to save you time while teaching you how to be a better investor. Bakes saves you time by diving into all the latest stock market news and information so that you don't have to. 
He reads all the latest articles, analyzes the charts, and listens to all the relevant podcasts. And then once a week, he gives you a breakdown of what's happening in the market. Stock Market Authority is constantly outperforming the S&P and the HFRX. Bakes is going to share with you his weekly stock observations. He'll give you concise insights and show you how to lock in profits and minimize losses. Stock Market Authority is making money in up and down markets. Wouldn't you like to do the same? So join now and let Bakes show you how. Head on over to stockmarketauthority.com and sign up for our free newsletter today. That's stockmarketauthority.com, making money in up and down markets. We are back. And today we've been talking about what to invest in now. And uh, Bill, I hope that's been helpful. And please let me know if I, if I haven't been. But at the top of that, uh, you know, what to invest in now is the SMA portfolio, Stock Market Authority portfolio. And uh, I'll, I'll show you exactly what we're doing. And again, I listen to more podcasts than anybody. And I don't see anybody saying, hey, here's what we invest in. Here's real money. Here's a real account. And here's how we're doing. So uh, you know, we, we have more winners and losers, more green than red. Uh, and, um, we, uh, uh, you know, are, are the, the thing that I'm drawn to, and I hate to be like this, but I always start at the bottom because I have these ranked from best to worst. And whenever I see down 15% in red, uh, I go, okay, this is going to go. And so this is the, the pro shares short MSCI, MSCI Emerging Markets Fund, EUM. It's in essence short, uh, the emerging markets, China being the biggest at 30%. So with the Chinese internet stocks acting so much better, it's going to show up here. We've already sold the prior two-thirds because of the sell discipline that, that we deploy. But I see this down 15%, and I go, you're old yeller, I'm taking you behind the barn, and you're getting shot. Goodbye. I know that's, that sounds extreme, but literally it takes two minutes and I put the order in and then I go about my day. And I can't tell you how freeing it is. I don't lose a lot of money. Just because I, whenever I see down 15, it's gone. And I can find stocks, as I've proven, that go up 20 that more than recoup that. But if you're down 50, you need to have doubles in order to get back to break even. And you and I both know that doesn't happen very often at all. So the portfolio overall was 28% short. And we're in essence short Kathy Wood's uh, crazy stocks, Tesla, Zoom, uh, uh, Exact Sciences. We're short the SPACs that uh, are, are I, I think, going the way of the Dodo. We're short small cap energy. No, sorry. Um, uh, we're short the Russell 2000 small caps. Uh, we're short the Qs, mainly technology, which is you know Microsoft is feeding into today. But what's happened is the sell discipline is uh, automatically, at least for me, telling me, okay, you have to lighten up some of the shorts. You have to increase some of the longs. So we're 28%, in essence, betting that, that some stocks are going down. 45% were long energy platinum, uh, the Chinese internet companies. So what's that? 17% net long. And then we're 27% in cash, which as we've discussed in the past, the pros are never going to do that. So we have all kinds of flexibility. We can become either really bearish or really bullish. And, um, uh, you know, it's... It's it's the market. Just listening to the market, at least through my interpretation, and and reducing risk and moving to new areas in a very methodical fashion. And if it makes sense to you, then we should be the top of the pyramid for for you know the riskiest kind of of uh, of stock market investing. But I don't take a lot of risk because I want to make money every year. That's my whole whole mindset. I'm not uh, making crazy bets anywhere. Uh, you see in the chart the the sell this past week of um, uh, the emerging markets ETF. And again, it took two minutes. You're down 15. It's the last third. It's a tiny position. It's gone. And there's two things. Number one, it obviously frees up cash to go look for other opportunities and invest in other things. Number two, it's psychologically freeing. I'm not, it's gone, it's, it didn't work out, that's fine. Uh, there's plenty of things that are going to work out as our, as our results show. And so next, just go on to the next thing. And it's, uh, it's very liberating. And, and I'm telling you, I, I, I recommend it highly. 
Uh, I put this out over the course of the week via the newsletter and my, my other posts. We bought oil and gas services, Invesco Dynamic Oil and Gas Services, PWJ. And yes, uh, 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 Van from Houston, I know a couple weeks ago I said, don't buy energy for now. Well, that's more the exploration and production companies, the oil and gas producers that are drilling into the ground and coming up with oil and natural gas. Uh, those are looking weaker to me. They've had huge runs for the past two years. And yes, they've been very capital. Uh, they've, they've been very disciplined with their capital. Free cash flow is improved dramatically. The balance sheets have improved. But now the service guys are getting paid. The rig companies, the Halliburtons, all those folks are starting to get, uh, uh, you know, some of the budgets are freeing up and it's coming to to uh, these stocks. And so we're there. Uh, I, I'm de-emphasizing the EMPs. I'm buying the uh, oil and gas services. And we'll see how that plays out. And I'm happy to, do, to, to discuss more. But uh, that's a pretty chart. I can see that. And... Um, uh, and I'll update if I see dramatic changes in the exploration and production companies. We can talk offline. Um, but that's where the, the portfolio is at the moment uh, on the 25th. And uh, I look forward to updating you. Uh, let's get into this week's big takes. Uh, my take is, is this. Uh, uh, this is from The Economist. Uh, another uh, magazine I devour. Uh, I recommend it highly. It's based in the UK. It gives a, a uh, you know a very balanced perspective of, of especially US investing. And uh, this is retweeted from Jensen Blockland, and it shows central banks buying gold. And you know why are they doing it now when they're we had a 9.1% inflation print. That isn't the way the textbooks are supposed to go. And my point is the textbooks don't care about you and they don't care about your money and they don't care about your portfolio. So I'm, uh, gold can go up with S and P going up. Gold can go, go up when stocks go down that see the two thousands. And so I'm just, uh, uh, I'm, now paying more attention to what the central banks are doing, what gold is doing. I'm looking at the junior miners. I haven't pulled the trigger yet, obviously. I will tell you when I do. But I want to have the operating leverage of a higher gold price ripping through the income statements, showing up in, in, in growing profits for the miners, and frankly, having more institutions that haven't paid attention to this in 10 years finally say, I got to own some gold. And um, as an institutional investor, we can do that in an afternoon. Again, I have not done this yet, but uh, my take is uh, the precious metals are, are acting much better. I don't know if that means that the cryptos are going to descend further and enhance the position of, of gold in the marketplace, but it is something I'm clearly watching. And if you have thoughts and ideas and things that I'm, I've missed, uh, I'm all ears. I want to hear it. So that's my uh, my bakes take for for the week. As we close out today's show, I always like to end with some much needed levity. I know I, I, I carry uh, I, I cover some pretty serious stuff here, but a uh, good friend of mine turned me on to Shane Gillis, a uh, stand-up comedian. His, uh, his live in Houston. It's in the description. Uh, the link. It's uh, 48 minutes on YouTube. It is really really funny. Uh, that's it for today's show. Please go to stockmarketauthority.com, sign up for the free newsletter. Please email me, bakes at stockmarketauthority.com. Reach out to Twitter for DMs at bakestakes underscore. I'm working on a lot of new things next week. Please go to the, uh, the links so you can uh, uh, support those authors, buy those books. And if I can be helpful, please let me know. Hope you have a great week. This is Bakes, the Stock Market Authority, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye now. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.